to talk about the Creative and Artistic Award. Um, it sort of says what it is on the tin, but um, it's about using the British Library's digital content in the context of artistic and creative endeavors to inspire, stimulate, amaze, and provoke. Um, we had 16 entries, and like Achilles said, I wish I could um, present all of them, although we'd be here all day, but they were all awesome. Um, but I do try and tweet these things on BL Digital, so you can see some, exa some more examples there. Um, but one of the um, first ones that came in to us was this little one by Joe Bell, which I just love. I think it's one of my favorites. Um, he created this short video while he was studying new media at University of Leeds, um, and it brings together a selection of um, our images from 19th century. So this is the other one you, that um, was in our shortlisting, and you probably have seen this if you go out on the piazza. This is Crossroads of Curiosity by David Normal, um, and it's a massive artwork that was um, produced from um, solely from our Victorian era images that we had put on um, Flickr, 
um, their 19th century book illustrations, and um, the Burning Man Festival um, is an insane event out in the middle of the desert in Nevada. Um, and so uh, when we heard that he had built this and designed it, we asked him if he would come out here. Um, and we had our own little small Burning Man festival to celebrate the lighting of it. Um, so you get a little taster. <laughs> So that was a lot of fun, and some of you might have been there. Um, and that was a, the whole artwork is based around um, kind of a cabinet of curiosity. So it was, it was so exciting to see all those images from um, the Victorian era up um, out there. So have a look on your way out. Let's see where I go. Okay, so um, the runner-up is Nyx by Gothulus Rift, and um, Stella had alluded to it um, as part of her off-the-map competition that she runs. Um, and this was, they were actually the winner um, in 2013, um, but it's such an excellent entry. Um, and it's based on um, the virtual reconstruction of the Font Hill Abbey, which is this insane um, country house that doesn't exist anymore. Um, because it had this huge tower and it collapsed um, in the mid 1800s, um, 19th century. Um, but they recreated it using all of our um, digitized content, so maps and um, any kind of imagery we had about um, the Font Hill Abbey, and it's very cool. Looking. And it's now free, and it's, it was built for um, or designed for the Oculus Rift. So, um, and you can, if you happen to have an Oculus Rift at home, you can download it for free. <laughs> have to reconstruct the abbey by solving different puzzles. And that was a team of students um, from University of South Wales who had put that together. It's always very exciting to see what comes out of off the map. 
Um, and now, for the winner of the creative category, is uh, The Order of Things by Mario Klingman, Quasimondo. Um, just really quick, he, he, when we put online um, one million untagged random images from the British Library, um, we were hoping this guy existed out there who would make some sense with them. Um, and he, he fully took advantage of that um, thing that we had done and he helped us um, added tens of thousands of tags to our images by um, through machine learning, which I think he'll talk a little bit more about that, um, and then produce artwork um, that is clever and awesome in itself. Um, from what he was tagging. I think one of my favorite ones early on was, um, <laughs> he's got a whole group of these here, um, was the um, very sad lit girls, <laughs> which is portraying all the women crying in the 19th century. <laughs> I think there's probably about a million more of those images. But um, without further ado, Quasiwando. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was a child, uh, we had this magic drawer at home, and actually. I think there's this kind of unwritten rule that uh, this drawer has to exist in everybody's home. And this was this thing that contained just a collection of, uh, well, magic things like uh, broken watches, uh, old glasses, coins from all over the world. And like, you, well, you could open this and take it out and uh, just imagine, oh, what was this used for? Or invent games with it. And uh, well, it was just like you had, could have hours of, of enjoyment with these things. So when the British Library two years ago uploaded one million images to Flickr, this is kind of, I felt totally reminded of the time. and. Uh, browsing through these images, like this collection, you constantly thought, oh, what comes next? What, what could I discover? And then, especially in the early days, you could still kind of see, find a, a creature and then you just had one view and that was you. So you could feel like, uh, I just rediscovered this uh, strange creature. But yes, uh, well, the problem was that you had to browse through this. So uh, if you would say like, oh, give me pictures of seahorses, there uh, was no other way than uh, click, click, click. And that with a million images, I, I think I calculated that if you just look a second at every image and do that for 24 hours a day, it would take you, I think, two weeks to, to have seen every image once. So, um, but I call myself a code artist, which doesn't mean that I'm a, like my code is particularly beautiful or artistically, but I'm writing code to create art. So I'm writing algorithms and uh, try to produce interesting things. And that means I'm very interested in visuals and also image classification. So I thought, well, maybe I can put my skills to use and uh, help the British Library with uh, the tagging and uh, so because like this is practically what you get a uh, random assortment of images you spot certain things but it would be so much nicer if you get something like this where you say I have portraits I have maps I have decorative initials musical notes or beautiful animals and so I had already something that I used for another, another project, which was using not machine learning directly, or you say not deep learning, but rather looking at global image uh, features, like how colors are distributed, how uh, the relationships of shapes towards each other, how edges are oriented. So I had this 128 dimensional feature vector, but that already allowed me to do interesting things. So, this is like uh, how it looks on like one of the tools I built me. It uses uh, TSNE clustering. And as you can see, well, it already separates really nicely. Well, it, this is a kind of a constructed set, but you can see it separates the different, differently looking images into these nice looking clusters. So my process is semi-automatic. So I'm 
running my classification algorithm on it, then I have these clustering going on, and then I can see what's in the cluster, and very quickly, using other tools, say, okay, yes, this is a map, this is all maps, everything that looks like this, well, give me that, and I will decide if is, this is a map. And then I'm building additional tools uh, where I can, again, take everything that it thinks is, for example, a skull, and put it to me in a very easy, accessible tool, and position everything that, it, that looks very similar next to each other, so I can say, oh yeah, this is a skull, and this, and this, and this, and this is not, so I am very quick at uh, sorting out categories, and so it can group things by all kinds of uh, attributes like color and things. So yeah, these are these wonderful Penny Dreadful covers. Uh, I, I love searching for waterfalls. I got a huge collection of waterfalls. Uh, and actually, maybe somebody wants to sponsor me in, uh, in a world trip where I actually go to the original locations <laughs> and take a picture how it looks now. Um, and yeah, so I create these uh, clusters which I think already look beautiful by themselves, but in the end they also are maybe useful for some purposes, like because yeah, you can see there is groupings, are groupings going on of similar objects of different properties, and uh, I I constantly put them out. So here we have. Uh, so for example, if I do this with like all kind of mixed letters, like A B C D, then very often all the A's cluster together, and I can say oh this. So additionally to knowing it's a decorative initial, I can just say these are all the A's, and all it takes me is one click, which is, well, in my experience, if you want to get a lot of things tagged, try to make that whole process as, as quick, as painless as possible. So ideally, it's just a single click and not anything where you have to type in. And so I also built me these other tools for kind of like in order to use the material. For example, this automatic cleanup where, because as you know, these images come often scanned out of the book. There's lots of extra text. You have the paper structure. So I made these things that very often work well. I mean, you know, it never works 100%, but you put in an image and you get a cleaned up version. Or for other tools, I make these automatic masking tools where I get a well. I get a transparent mask for for these objects, which is actually sometimes quite difficult because it's not like you don't. It's well, no. It's when you do, like try to fill something in and there's simply the outline missing. So it tries to be smart about this. Uh, so overall, and that's what I mean with the kind of sheer, sheer force. So. I looked at it, and so far on my local folder, I have about 210,000 images, which are in a category where I said this is a map and this is an embellishment and stuff. Above the, among those are 43,000 maps, 40,000 portraits, and lots of others in, in smaller quantities. So in a way, I'm a one-man crowd, kind of, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, now after, Getting, like, that's the nice thing. So it's like you look at first this chaos and you, well, you make out, oh yeah, there are portraits, there are other things. Once you start sorting these things out, you start seeing patterns and uh, that you haven't seen before. Because, well, my approach is I remove the stuff that jumps to my eye first, let's say portraits, maps, easy things, and you're left with something else. But that something else doesn't contain these uh, things that say, oh, look at me, but well, suddenly other things that you neglected before suddenly show up, and you, doing this, you always discover new patterns. So I'm not looking for something in particular. I rather see, oh yes, so there are bicycles, so I start a new bicycle category, and there are uh, portraits of women reading books, so well, maybe I start collecting these. But you also make some funny discoveries, like plagiarism, so as you can see here, <laughs> This is 1864 London, and somebody, I have no idea what happened there. That's for you to find, like figure out why did somebody, it's a different publisher, but drew exactly, it, it's redrawn. Huh? I don't know what happened there. Uh, printing errors, I love glitches, and sometimes you find these, but it's, or uh, vandalism. So <laughs> maybe we can check the library card who actually was the last person to get that. Uh, and then these little re like things there where you think, oh, this is exactly the same, but uh, maybe you can spot the one that is different, that third from the top. 
uh, or another like a reuse, like you have the same element, but somebody <laughs> took the, the woodcut and uh, kind of retouched it. So you, that, that's always nice to find these little nuggets. And of course, by, by ordering all these by visual similarity, you would, you would probably not find that by just looking for it. You have to have some machine way to find this. Or uh, reuse of, uh, so the, I guess this was first, and then later on they said, oh, we still have that plate around, so <laughs> let's uh, cut that guy out. Um, the other thing is, uh, I'm like, especially, I call these the situations, like uh, scenes with lots of people in them, and it's particular the material coming from those Penny Dreadfuls or Illustrator. It, I see, I mean, I'm, I haven't studied it, but I see it, this was before cinema and anything, so in a way you had to tell stories in these uh, illustrations. So, and in these, so they used these uh, recurring themes to tell a certain story, and I like discovering these recurring themes. For example, one is uh, bad's always bad, so in, in bad's horrible things happen, people die. Uh, usually they die or are very sick or they, they get killed, I think, oh, not, not now. Uh, the open door, I like, uh, also kind of, usually it's a bad surprise if somebody comes in, uh, <laughs> they discover it. But the open door, I think I got a, a thousand or uh, maybe 2,000, there's tons of open doors. And uh, so yes, it's always somebody disturbing, or maybe it's, maybe it's a happy visit. Uh, and, and this is one of my favorite, The Observer. So you, it's typically, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, and yes, okay, well, overhearing, and uh, yes, <laughs> so, and, so, yeah, uh, I love, this is the nice thing, so you start a new collection, and of course, you, you generate happiness for yourself, uh, for me, uh, by, when going through the things, say, oh, this is another one, it's like collecting, uh, well, collecting things, so, oh, yeah, and here's the, so, um, Order, what did I want to say? Yes, okay, that's then when I start creating my art in a way too, because I like to put things in order. So after collecting a whole bunch of uh, similar elements, I start cleaning them up and uh, just uh, rearranging them because whereas my theory, so we have this one million illustrations and um, well, somebody 100 years, 200 years ago spent days on, on creating a single woodcut or engraving and now you go through it and it's, oh, it's just another fossil, who cares? So I, I try to, to bring those things back to, to, to the view and that uh, like people can appreciate just like the, the craftsmanship that went into it. So here is, I, I always forget, I think it's 24 anonymous profiles. I love these geological profiles, which again are those things that maybe they're, oh, Maybe here's an expert for geological profiles, so, but usually this is something you see and uh, think, okay, well, it doesn't concern me, but I think they are beautiful and they need to be reappreciated. Uh, or here, uh, yeah, just rocks. Uh, I, my rock, I, actually, my rock collection is my, my favorite one. It's really like, whenever I see, and, and the rock is really kind of the most boring thing you can imagine, so. <laughs> but I, I found a way to, to make rocks cool. So, or uh, for me. And of course, portraits uh, without end. So this is uh, just, and actually you can't see it in this one, but they are, I'm using also face detection after I've figured out it's a portrait. There's always the thing with the one million images, as we heard before, or with big data, you have to think, where do I put my computing power? So do I run face detection on every image or do I only run it when I'm already sure that it might be a portrait? So that's what I'm doing because face detection is more expensive than my classification. But then once I've done it, all these are sorted by the angle that people look. So, and these ones too. So, of course, then I can filter by giving me only colored portraits, cut them automatically, so only the face is there, and then arrange them so they all look to the inside. So actually, so yeah, the left ones look to the right, so they all look to the middle. Or here, I, face detection also gives you age detection, so for my birthday, I looked for, <laughs> that was a year ago, so man, that looked like 44. <laughs> Uh, and yes, we saw that before. These are 16 very sad girls. Admittedly, there are hundreds more, and uh, I will do one with uh, sad man too, or there's more the kind of uh, 
oh my god, I'm ruined thing. <laughs> so I will do that next. I already started collecting. And well, out of this whole, like, this, I started this two years ago. Um, yes, pretty much. But there hap happened to come out a lot of interesting uh, collaborations or commissions where, like, my work I did with this got me into new fields that I didn't think of before. So, for example, um, I, one year ago at this place, there was another symposium, and uh, I met uh, the team from the Cardiff University who were working on the illustration archive. And so what we did, because I had already these collections, I put my collection that I found into, into their system. So as you can see, I, there, so I don't know, maybe a few hundred of these themed collections, women with hands on their heads, and so or all these kind of things like objects or shoes. And so I just, well, we worked together. So I, I used their API and could help them getting some initial content in there. So yeah, this is the series where I'm looking for this gesture. And uh, well, uh, another thing, I was commissioned by the Knowledge Quarter Festival this year. They wanted me to, to make an artwork using the, the material from the British Library, so, and this was supposed to be screened in a, on, a, on a screen, and I wasn't there, so it should be something with sound and, uh, and images. So what I did was I was looking through the British Library sound archive and found these experimental sounds, uh, so I made it to myself very difficult. Um, I hope this works, and uh, Hugh Davis is the name of the composer, oh, and I didn't plug in the little stick so so let's let's listen to my computer so I, I found f about over 4,000 circular objects and uh, just try to kind of uh, use the sound and these the sound generates these objects and tries to well they all try to squeeze against each other and and, and look for attention maybe that's what it is and uh, can you hear that sound it's I'm not sure. But so yeah, it looks like oh, they are scratching. That's what my association was with the, with that sound. They always like oh, try to squeeze out. But in the end, I just like the the visual. And I found so many circular objects that I wanted to find a way how to, to to use them. So so yeah, this goes on and on. And uh, well, maybe sometimes you discover something that you like. But yeah, so the circular theme. I think I got ten thousand of things that are just round. But I move on. Oh, and uh, lastly, that was kind of what I'm pretty proud of is that the Museum of Modern Art invited me also to, to do a, give a workshop about working with digitized archives so, and do a talk there. So what I did, I printed out, like ran, I randomly downloaded, uh, I think, 3,000 of the images, created these little trading cards with a QR code on them, and then asked the, the participants of the workshop to, to start, like, in, in a way, enjoying this process that I'm doing, too, in a way, like finding patterns in the material, creating their own kind of sub-collections. And yeah, so we did this all day, and in the end, using this QR code, I could just take those sorted packets and hold them in front of the camera and say, yes, these are all, let's say, for example, the uh, embellishments or maps. And yeah, that was really fun. So what comes next for me is, uh, well, over the last year, I got deeper into the whole real machine learning and co convolutional neural networks, which is my approach goes only so far that it can say this is a map and this is uh, a portrait. But say, for example, I want to figure out how many people are on this uh, image and or is this a bicycle? Then I need these machine learning techniques. So I've learned a lot over the last year and I want to apply more uh, of this to, to the work because you saw I only covered so far about... Uh, well, 20% of the material that's available. So if anybody has a free GPU server for me or something that I could abuse, I, because that's the problem, me being just a freelance artist, I, these machines are expensive. You have access to these uh, supercomputers. So if anybody wants to give me some server time, that would be nice. And of course, uh, 
I'm always open to working. I mean, I love working with archives now, and there's always so much to discover. And well, that's pretty much where where I'm going. So if if you have anything that needs to be artistically explored, I will be here all day. So <laughs> thank you very much, and thanks to the VR team. Thank you.